Ladies and gentlemen, please rise for the arrival of the official party. Ladies and gentlemen, please welcome Major General Bradley A. Becker, Commanding General, United States Army Military District of Washington. Mr. Patrick J. Hallinan, Executive Director, Army National Cemeteries Program. <laughs> Mr. Robert Swan, Polish Legion of American Veterans. <laughs> and the Honorable Robert A. McDonald, Secretary of Veterans Affairs. <laughs> Ladies and gentlemen, the President of the United States. Ladies and gentlemen, please remain standing for the procession of our nation's colors and those of our veteran service organizations. As we march on the colors, the United States Navy Band will play the National Emblem March. Please place your hand over your heart or render a hand salute.
Please remain standing for the prayer for all veterans, delivered by Chaplain Michael McCoy, Sr., Director, Chaplain Service, National Chaplain Center. Let us pray. Almighty and eternal God, who give us the freedoms we enjoy in this great nation, come visit us in this most sacred garden where many of our veterans have gathered and many of our veterans and nation's heroes rest. Fill our hearts today with thankfulness for our veterans who answered the call to defend the honor and just causes of our nation. We thank you for their patriotism, their devotion to liberty and justice, human dignity and rights, compassion and self-giving. We thank you for their diversity and for their unity in mission. Let all who would forget war reach out in compassion to those who must always remember. May the nightmares of all war cease so that healing can take place. To honor our veterans, may each American find reason to love, not hate, and strength to build than to destroy. Renew our sense of unity, hope, and faith through times of testing and difficulties. God, give us a joyous spirit of celebration of our nation's veterans and their families. Bless us now with your presence in the name of our God, who challenges us to care. Amen. Now I'd like to invite Mr. Robert Swan, National Commander, Polish Legion of American Veterans, to lead us in our Pledge of Allegiance. I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the republic for which it stands, one nation, under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. Please be seated. It is now my distinct pleasure to introduce the members of the Veterans Day National Committee. The committee was formed by a presidential order in 1954 to plan this annual observance in honor of America's veterans and to support Veterans Day observances throughout the nation. Please hold your applause until I've introduced these special guests. If able, please stand when your name is called. Robert Swan, National Commander, Polish Legion of American Veterans, USA. Thomas Stevens, National President, Korean War Veterans Association. Angel Zuniga, National Commander, American GI Forum. Arminda Crawford, National Commander, Catholic War Veterans of the USA. David Eberly, Chief Executive Officer, American Ex-Prisoners of War. Carl Singer, National Commander, Jewish War Veterans of the USA. John Rowan, President, Vietnam Veterans of America. Al Kovac, National President, Paralyzed Veterans of America. Brian Duffy, Commander-in-Chief, Veterans of Foreign Wars of the United States. Harold Chapman, National Commander, AMVETS. Dale Stamper, National President, Blinded Veterans Association. Richard Gore, Sr., National Commandant, Marine Corps League. Donald Larson, National President, Fleet Reserve Association. Richard Ronaldo, National Commander, Leader of Valor of the United States of America. Lyman Smith, Executive Director, Military Chaplains Association. Donald Youngblood, National Commander, Army and Navy Union of the USA. John Ostrowski, Executive Director, Non-Commissioned Officers Association. Douglas Bolt, National Vice Commander, the American Legion. Mr. David Riley, National Commander, Disabled American Veterans. Mike Plummer, Deputy Legislative Director, National Association of Uniformed Services.
Clay Legrand, Jr., Commander-in-Chief, Military Order of the World Wars. John Adams, National President, the Retired Enlisted Association. Herschel Gober, National Commander, Military Order of the Purple Heart. And Dana Atkins, National President, Military Officers Association of America. The associate members of the committee are located in the boxes to my left. I'd like to ask the presidents and national commanders that comprise our associate membership to stand and be recognized. Ladies and gentlemen, please recognize our veterans' national leadership with your applause. It is now my pleasure to introduce our Veterans Organization host for 2016, Polish Legion of American Veterans, USA. The Polish Legion of American Veterans, USA, also known as PLAV, is honored to serve as the host organization for the 2016 Veterans Day National Observance at Arlington National Cemetery. PLAV was founded after the end of World War I, holding its first official convention in 1921. Today, they celebrate over 95 years of providing assistance to veterans and their families. Chartered by Congress, PLAV represents over 3 million American veterans of Polish descent who have served in all wars and conflicts of the United States since its inception. With knowledgeable and trained service officers, as well as representation in Washington, D.C., PLAV continues to provide assistance to deserving veterans and their families with posts and chapters around the country. Veteran and ladies auxiliary volunteers donate endless hours of service and help in VA medical centers, providing aid and support to hospitalized heroes. PLAV also has scholarships available at the national as well as state level departments, providing financial aid to qualified students. They are represented today by their national commander. Ladies and gentlemen, please welcome Mr. Robert Swan. Thank you. Um, welcome, Mr. President, Mr. Vice President, or Mr. Secretary, veterans, friends, and all of you gathered here today. It is with great honor that I'm able to speak to you on this special day as the, this marks the 95th anniversary of the Polish Legion of American Veterans. After years of lobbying by our organization, the Polish Legion of American Veterans, Congress unanimously voted to proclaim Polish Legionnaire Kazimierz Pulaski an honorary United States citizen, and on November 6, 2009, President Barack Obama signed Public Law 111-94 which proclaimed General Kashmir Pulaski the seventh in history to receive this posthumous award or honor. We'd like to recognize the contribution of all servicemen and women that have provided while they were on active duty, and then their continued volunteering within the VSOs, which helps many veterans in need at the VS VA hospitals and homes, and even individual families in need. The valued principles gained while in the military offers many a pathway to success. As a veteran or friend or family of a veteran, we know that our military members go through while serving and we know how hard it was and even that is now when our service members return home. So we are uniquely interested in helping in many ways, but are also, but are also all of you. VA hospitals and homes are always in need of support, either monetarily or through comfort item donations. Although membership in the traditionary veteran service organizations that are declining, I am pleased to see younger veterans are still joining or creating newer, more specific organizations where they are able to continue to help our nation's veterans. Now, Amy, now may we salute all of our military service members and their families that made that ultimate sacrifice. Thank you for the honor of speaking to you today.
Ladies and gentlemen, please welcome the Honorable Ronald McDonald, Secretary of Veterans Affairs. Mr. President, fellow veterans, honored guests, in the last scene of Spielberg saving Private Ryan, the aged Private Ryan kneels reverently in front of Captain Miller's grave. Captain Miller gave his life in combat to save Private Ryan's. Ryan says to Miller and all veterans, I've tried to live my life the best I could. I hope that, at least in your eyes, I've earned what all of you have done for me. I'm a veteran. When I come to Arlington, I imagine myself saying that to every veteran resting here. I hope that, in your eyes, I've earned what all of you have done for me. We'd all do well to kneel at any one of these markers and repeat Ryan's words. We'd all do well to turn to a veteran and ask, am I earning it? Seven years ago today, right here in Arlington, President Obama made a sacred vow to veterans. America will not let you down, he said. We will take care of our own. And then he fulfilled that vow. President Obama and Congress provided the largest single-year VA budget increase in over three decades his very first year. Under his leadership, the VA budget has nearly doubled. He opened VA's doors to nearly a half a million veterans who had lost their eligibility in 2003. And he supported three presumptive conditions for veterans exposed to Agent Orange. Today, even though there are two million fewer veterans than in 2009, there are nearly 1.2 million more veterans receiving some type of VA care and services. One point One point two million more veterans are enrolled for VA health care. One point three million more receive disability compensation. A half a million more veterans have VA home loans, and we've seen a 76 percent increase in veterans receiving educational benefits. We've cut veteran homelessness in half since 2010. Veteran unemployment's dropped Veteran unemployment's dropped by over half in the last five years. Unemployment for post-9-11 veterans has dropped by 70 percent. America will not let you down, the President said. We will take care of our own. He stood by that commitment year after year after year, and for good reason. America met Sergeant First Class Corey Remsburg when President Obama introduced him during the 2014 State of the Union Address. The President had met Corey four and a half years earlier in St. Marigli's, France. Corey was one of the elite rangers who'd parachuted in to commemorate the D-Day landings. Then, Corey returned to Afghanistan for his 10th tour. The President next saw Corey in a hospital bed in Bethesda Naval. He'd been grievously wounded by a 50-pound roadside bomb outside of Kandahar. Corey couldn't speak. He could barely move. But he gave the President a thumbs up. Three years later, when the President and I traveled to Phoenix, President Obama quietly took a detour. He needed to see Corey. Corey had made a miraculous progress in the Tampa VA polytrauma unit. So this time, with help, Corey stood, saluted, and said what you'd expect. Rangers lead the way, sir. 
Corey's the epitome of that rare combination of qualities that characterizes the very best among us. A dogged sense of duty, indomitable courage, and plain American grit. President Obama admires that in Corey. He admires it in all American veterans. It's why he loves them. Ladies and gentlemen, our honored guest, the Commander-in-Chief, and the 44th President of the United States, Barack Obama. Thank you. Thank you so much. Thank you. Thank you very much. Thank you so much. Thank you. Thank you very much. Please. Thank you. Thank you. Please. Thank you. Secretary McDonald, Mr. Hallinan, distinguished guests, and most of all, our extraordinary veterans and your families. The last time I stood on these hallowed grounds on Memorial Day, our country came together to honor those who have fought and died for our flag. A few days before, our nation observed Armed Forces Day, honoring all who are serving under that flag at this moment. And today, on Veterans Day, we honor those who honored our country with its highest form of service. You who once wore the uniform of our Army, Navy, Air Force, Marines, or Coast Guard, we owe you our thanks. We owe you our respect and we owe you our freedom. We come together to express our profound gratitude for the sacrifices and contributions you and your family made on the battlefield, at home, and at outposts around the world. But America's gratitude to our veterans is something always grounded in something greater than what you did on duty. It's also an appreciation of the example that you continue to set after your service has ended. Your example as citizens. Veterans Day often follows a hard-fought political campaign, an exercise in the free speech and self-government that you fought for. It often lays bare disagreements across our nation. But the American instinct has never been to find isolation in opposite corners. It is to find strength in our common creed, to forge unity from our great diversity, to sustain that strength and unity even when it is hard. And when the election is over, as we search for ways to come together, to reconnect with one another and with the principles that are more enduring than trans transitory politics. Some of our best examples are the men and women we salute on Veterans Day. It's the example of young Americans, our 9-11 generation, who as first responders ran into smoldering towers, then ran to a recruiting center and signed up to serve. It's the example of a military that meets every mission, one united team, all looking out for one another, all getting each other's backs. It's the example of the single most diverse institution in our country. Soldiers, sailors, airmen, Marines, and Coast Guardsmen who represent every corner of our country, every shade of humanity, immigrant and native-born, Christian, Muslim, Jew, and non-believer alike, all forged into common service. It's the example of our veterans, 
patriots who, when they take off their fatigues, put back on the camouflage of everyday life in America and become our business partners and bosses, our teachers and our coaches, our first responders, city council members, community leaders, role models, all still serving this country we love with the same sense of duty and with valor. A few years ago, a middle school student from Missouri entered an essay contest about why veterans are special. And this is what he wrote. When I think of a veteran, I think of men or women who will be the first to help an elderly lady across the street. I also think of someone who will defend everyone, regardless of their race, age, gender, hair color, or other discriminations. After eight years in office, I particularly appreciate that he included hair color. <laughs> but that middle schooler is right. Our veterans are still the first to help, still the first to serve. They are women, like the retired military policewoman from Buffalo who founded an AMBETS post in her community and is now building a safe place for homeless female veterans with children. They are men like the two veterans from Tennessee, one in his 50s, one in his 60s, who wrote me to say they would happily suit up and ship out if we needed them. We might be just a little old, they wrote, but we will be proud to go and do what we were taught to do. Whenever the world makes you cynical, whenever you seek true humility and selflessness, look to a veteran. Look to someone like First Lieutenant Irving Lerner. Irving was born in Chicago to Russian Jewish immigrants during World War I. He served as a bombardier in the Army Air Corps, flying dozens of missions toward the end of World War II. When he returned home, Irving did what a lot of veterans do. He put his medals away. He kept humble about his service started living a quiet life. One fall day, walking down Sheffield Avenue on Chicago's north side, a stranger stopped him. He said, thank you for your service, and he handed him a ticket to see the Cubs play in the World Series. Now, it's a good thing Irving took that ticket, because it would be a while until his next chance. Irving worked hard managing the warehouses for his brother-in-law's tire company. He got married to a sergeant in the Women's Air Corps, no less. He raised four children, the oldest of whom Susan is celebrating her 71st birthday today. And on a June morning many years ago, another one of Irving's daughters, Carol, called to check in. Her mother answered but was in a rush. We can't talk, she said. Your father is being honored, and we're late. Carol asked, honored for what? And the answer came, for his heroism in the skies above Normandy exactly 50 years earlier. You see, Irving's children never knew that their father flew over those French beachheads on D-Day. He never mentioned it. Now when they call to check in, his children always say, thank you for saving the world. And Irving, sharp as ever at 100 years young, always replies, well, I had a little help. <laughs> whenever the world makes you cynical, whenever you doubt that courage and goodness and selflessness is possible, then stop and look to a veteran. They don't always go around telling stories of their heroism, so it's up to us to ask and to listen, to, de to tell those stories for them, and to live in our own lives the values for which they were prepared to give theirs. It's up to us to make sure they always get the care that they need. As Bob mentioned, 
when I announced my candidacy for this office almost a decade ago, I recommitted this generation to that work. And we've increased funding for veterans by more than 85 percent. We've cut veterans' homelessness almost in half. Today, more veterans have access to health care, and fewer are unemployed. We help disabled veterans afford prosthetics. We're delivering more mental health care services to more veterans than ever before because we know that not all wounds of war are visible. Together, we began this work. Together, we must continue to keep that sacred trust with our veterans and honor their good work with our own, knowing that our mission is never done. It is still a tragedy that 20 veterans a day take their own lives. We have to get them the help they need. We have to keep solving problems like long wait times at the VA. We have to keep cutting the disability claims backlog. We have to resist any effort to outsource and privatize the health care we owe America's veterans. <laughs> On Veterans Day, we acknowledge humbly that we can never serve our veterans in quite the same way that they served us, but we can try. We can practice kindness, we can pay it forward, we can volunteer, we can serve, we can respect one another, we can always get each other's backs. That is what Veterans Day asks all of us to think about. The person you pass as you walk down the street might not be wearing our nation's uniform today, but consider for a moment that a year or a decade or a generation ago, he or she might have been one of our fellow citizens who was willing to lay down their life for strangers like us. And we can show how much we love our country by loving our neighbors as ourselves. May God bless all who served and still do. And may God bless the United States of America. Ladies and gentlemen, please remain standing and join the United States Navy Band in singing God Bless America.